Hey everybody, welcome back to Rock Titan Live. I'm Scotty J. Got a great show for you today. Uh, I just got this album uh, not too long ago, and it's going to be coming out June 12th, but it's it's a super group of sorts, you know? Well, no, it is a, it is a super group. The guy that put this together, I have on the line right now, Mark Mengi, and uh, this is phenomenal. BPMD coming out June 12th, and I cannot wait to talk all about this. Mark, how, What's are, you, going on? how are you feeling? What's going on, man? Yeah, uh, you know, same old, same old. I'm, uh, I'm right now, I guess, where you were like a week ago, you know? We're dealing with, uh, you know, all kinds of issues in this quarantine, and the only way to get them solved is, if, you know, it's if it's an emergency. Yeah. So, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah I'm, I'm there, brother. I'm there. But uh, you're feeling good now? You're feeling better? I'm good. I am at probably 80%. Okay. 80%, which for me, that's 50% is good enough for me. So I go 100% at 50%. So I'm good. Right. Well, see, I if, if ever these things were going to happen, you know, it might as well happen now, you know, so it doesn't affect any touring or, you know, playing live and, you know, clubs and, you know, arenas and all that good stuff, man. Playing live. What's that, man? I don't know what that is anymore. Right? <laughs> I know, man. My God. But, uh, you know, of course, people that have been following you, people that are familiar with you as a bass player, you know, they know you from Metal Allegiance, which is another big super group that you put together. And I know you're a couple albums deep in with those guys. But the, I, I thought the funny thing between Metal Allegiance and BPMD, there is one constant other than yourself. And that yep. is Mr. Portnoy, man. Oh, my God. What a beast on drums he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My uh, MA partner in crime over there. Yeah, man. Oh, my God. So I guess you know, one of the first questions I have, because you seem to be the man, you know, that puts these you know amazing casts of musicians together to make some incredible music. What made you want to do something apart, I guess, from Metal Allegiance, you know, and kind of, you know, grabbing, you know, Mike again and and putting together. Uh, oh, God, who else do you have? Bobby Blitz. You know, my God, from Overkill, you know, I mean, holy hell, uh, this is pretty awesome. Phil Demmel, you got him in there, you know, but then, of course, with Metal Allegiance, you have Alex Skolnick and you got uh, David Elfson. So what made you kind of want to do this? It, you know, it wasn't pl it was not planned. One hundred percent. So if you would have asked me on July 8th of 2019, that's my birthday. Nice. Ah, OK, so July 8th of 2019. If there would be a band called BPMD with Bobby Blitz, Mark Mangy, Mike Portnoy, and Phil Demmel, and we'd have an album of 10 covers, uh, reimagined covers, signed to Napalm, I would have laughed in your face and said, you're out of your damn mind, man. I'm, start <laughs> I'm starting to write the third Metal Legion's record. But if you asked me on July 9th, that answer would have completely changed because that's the day... Um, it was spawned, if you will. And I uh, was right where I'm looking right now. Obviously, you guys can't see, but my backyard over here, I have a cool fire pit area where I like to hang out summer nights, just kick back, relax, chill out. And last summer, I uh, was doing just that, and I was hanging out with my kids, and we were just listening to tunes and hanging out. And my eight year old, who was right here, sitting next to me, nice, goes, Hey, Dad, you should play that. You should cover that song. And that song was Saturday Night Special. Very cool. And I was like, eh, you know, kind of like that. I love Skinner. And he assumed Metal Allegiance. I assumed Metal Allegiance. And then I started hearing things in my head. As the song's playing, I started hearing this, well, if I did this song, how would I do it? I asked myself that question. So I started hearing these chunky guitars, a la, like Justice for All style, Hetfield riffing. I started hearing these double bass patterns and drums. I started hearing all this. I was like, oh, shit, this could be cool. And then, coincidentally, I'm texting back and forth with Blitz because we bust each other's chops hard. Okay. I mean, it's the, the comedy relief between the two of us. It's, <laughs> it's funny. And we actually do a lot of press together because of that. We just start ragging on each other. And, uh, but we're close friends. We're good. He's one of my uh, best friends. I love the man. And uh, so we were in one of our rants, and then I text him. I'm like, hey, man, I, I got to call you. I call him up, 
Saturday Night Special is not even over yet. The song's still playing. I was like, dude, what would you think if we covered some tunes, or in this case, Saturday Night Special? I had, I just, this idea just came in my head of an arrangement and this and that. And before I even finished, she's like, I'm in and let's add Mountain and Cactus to it. And then, yeah, dude, that's awesome. And then, and then just like that, it was done. And then I was like, shit, who can we get to play drums? <laughs> Mike. <laughs> Mike. And then he was like, I don't need to be in another band. I'm like, if you're in 80 bands, <laughs> what does 81 matter? At that point, what does it matter? And um, and Mike's a drummer in this band. That's you know, I, I promised him that. And uh, and I love Mike. That you know, Mike's Mike and I go back a long ways, even before <laughs> MA. And uh, he's my partner in MA. He's uh, an amazing writer arranger with us. And um, not so much for Mike probably, because uh, he plays with Billy Sheen, who's probably possibly the greatest bass player on planet Earth. Um, but for me. You know, I'm comfortable with Mike behind the drums. I know, I I just know him in a studio. I know how he is. Um, I know we sound decent together, or I know he sounds great and I sound decent. And um, and so he was in. And then who is going to play guitar? Now, if you ask Phil Demmel, Phil Demmel thinks he was the third choice. <laughs> he's like, he's calling Skolnick up. That's what he keeps saying. He's, calling, <laughs> he's not oh. calling. If Alex says no, he's going to call Andreas from Sepultura. And I didn't, I, um, no, no, we called Phil because we wanted someone who shared that enthusiasm for this music. And, uh, and that night Phil said yes. And a few days later, we were at Portnoy's house in Pennsylvania making a record. So again, if you would have asked me on July 8th, not a possibility. If you asked me on July 9th, the tides have changed again. Wow. That is amazing. That is so funny. That story you told about Mike, man, I am not going to do another band <laughs> oh my god that is too funny man i don't think i knew he was in pennsylvania i'm in pennsylvania that's cool man what a great story mark i love how that all came together one of the really cool things for me you know was going over the album american made everybody it's called american made by bpmd 10 phenomenal covers that comes out june 12th via napalm records and uh I got like the original guys. Like I had Corky Lang on the show, which was really cool. You know, from he did Mountain. quote. He, he heard our version of "Never in My Life." Um, he gave a quote, and I actually have them right here. All right. Uh, I, enough. And he said, "BPMD put a whole new life into that piece of repertoire. Never in my life. Brilliant vocals, scary guitar and bass work, and Effin Portnoy is killing it with those three against four drum fills." Just effing outrageous. I'm officially jealous, and I'll start practicing again. Well done. So to know, and then we had Nugent sent a quote. Michael Anthony from Van Halen sent a quote. Uh, Carmine from Cactus sent a quote. Buck Dharma. It was just like, wow. You know, that, the fact, you know, it was like, wow. Didn't didn't expect that. Yeah. Well, you jumped ahead on me there because that was actually something I was going to ask you. Like, if you you know actively sought out in any way the blessings from these guys, but I guess really. You know, it was evident that they were going to give that to you. Now, and again, not only had I had Corky on the show, which was really what a great dude. And I mean, Mountain, my God, they're legendary. And then Cactus, you know, Carmine Apiece, he's been on a few times. Awesome, awesome guy, phenomenal drummer, you know. And then uh, Jason Hartless, drummer. I had a lot of drummers from the guys that you've, uh, you know, that you covered. But uh, Jason Hartless, he's he's the drummer for Ted Nugent. And uh, just wang, dang, sweet poon, tang, man. I mean, the songs that you chose specifically, you know, like Saturday Night Special from Leonard Skinner. And, uh, what, I guess, how did you guys select what songs you were going to do? Did, did you each have, like, kind of your own classic rock song that you're like, this is what we're doing? And I guess who did what? I'm assuming you were Saturday Night Special. Yeah, so as that evening was progressing... And then we got into a group uh, text later that night. And it was, man, the floodgates were opening for songs. It was like, and then, I don't know if it was me. I don't think it was me. Someone said, it should be released in the 1970s. And then Blitz said, it's got to be American made. You know, and just like that, it's got to be American made. And it was like American made. Oh, yeah, done. So it had to be released in the 70s by an American band. Now, it would be really obvious if we did covers of Sabbath and Priest and Scorpions and 
this and that, which are our favorite bands. There's no denying that. You know, everyone who knows me knows I worship the ground Black Sabbath walk on, you know. Um, but we wanted to challenge ourselves. We wanted to challenge ourselves as musicians to go, all right, we each get to pick two songs. Could be any songs as long as it meets those criteria, and you can't argue. Meaning, if I pick two songs, you got to do them. If Phil picks <laughs> two songs, we got to do them. And we went down that road, you know, and for example – Phil picked uh, Tattoo Vampire by Valorious the Cult, which I've never even heard that song in my life. And then when I listened to it, I was like, how the hell are we going to do this one? <laughs> and then, But he, he brought his vision for that song in, and that's a shredder. It's an absolute shredder, and it's one of my favorite now on a record. Um, Phil never heard Cactus before. He never heard of him. Wow. Never, never even heard of Cactus before. Um, so those are the challenges where it opens you up to go, how are you going to, number one, you never heard the thing before. Number two, how are you going to portray that? How are you going to play that? How are you going to perceive that? And that's what we did. So we got together at Mike's house, and we he recorded his drum tracks, 10 songs in one day. And we were jamming live as he was recording. So the record has that live feel because while Mike was cutting his drum tracks, we're, playing, we're, we're jamming live with him. Um, and then we took that approach through uh, Phil, myself, and, uh, and Bobby. All right. Yeah. Bobby sounds awesome. Yeah. I, I I love the way he owned the songs. That was so cool. And then, um, you know, of course, Phil Jesus. You know, I mean, he's just shredding away. You know, my, at, this is my favorite, and I, I it's a biased opinion. And I love Machine Head's The Blackening record. And it's a great record, but this is my favorite Phil Demel playing. Oh, when you, when you listen to what he's laying down, it's like oozing soul and groove and. And it's fast and it's heavy, but it just has that swagger to it. And, um, you know, it's my favorite demo playing. I'll tell you what, it's not hard to understand why Slayer went and grabbed him up, you know, for like the final leg of their tour. Yep. You know, yeah. I mean, my God. He's amazing. He's amazing. Oh, but, uh, you know, again, just kind of going over some of the songs that we talked about. Toys in the Attic, you know, Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers. That, awesome. was, that, was, my, that was my second pick. Oh, was, rock! On, dude, ZZ Top, man, those guys are killer. And then uh, Evil, I mean, that's a classic, you know. And and Cactus played it, but uh, I mean that that song, you know, a lot of guys have played that. Actually, Clutch did a version of that not too long ago. Clutch has been putting out some of their uh, music, and they did Evil. So it was really cool to hear the way you guys, you know, put your stamp on it, you know, versus hearing, you know, what some other folks have done with it. So, man, that was really really cool. I guess, uh, what are, now that it's done, all right, now that you got this baby in the bag, have you guys thought about, you know, more long-term prospects as yeah. BPMD well, and doing some original stuff? Well, we, the original game plan was we're going to put out the record. We put it out strategically on June 12th so we could do summer festivals. Right before that summer wave hit, we were going to be there. And COVID hit. And as we were going to put the announcement out, all of our slots got canceled. Everything was gone, uh, which sucks. But So the goal was to play play festivals, not touring. We weren't going to be a touring band. Right. But we would do festivals and specialty shows and one-offs and you know crew, whatever. It's cool stuff. Um, but we were definitely going to hit the festival circuit, so I'm pretty bummed about that um, because I, I feel if people were to watch us live and see and hear what happened that one day we jammed together at Portnoy's house, um, it was magical. It was um, We were just all within that. We were just, just going at it. And it was just four. The only people in that room was the four of us and an engineer. <laughs> so no one will ever know. You'll hear it on a record. You can hear it on a record. That's the, that's how we si sounded live together, but even amped up even more though. Um, so I feel if this group plays live together, it's going to be pretty pretty crazy. And um, and I, I almost envision these songs becoming like a thrash metal jam band. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm envisioning. And um, you know, so that's the game plan there as far as the touring goes. So when we're allowed to play, we will do select shows. Okay. Um, th there are ideas to do a second and even a third record because um, uh, we're, we're toying with other ideas. Um, so there's talks of that as well. And uh, we're just having fun, man. That, that's all this is. 
it's no pressure. I love it. It's all fun. It's, you know, a lot of people think, well, you got these four dudes and they should be doing this. And it's just, listen, this is, it was an idea spawned off of a backyard barbecue, man. And that's what this music is. It's fun. Four friends getting together, jamming. We just happen to hit the record button. That's it. I mean, that's, that's all this is. That's killer, man. Well, I mean, I tell you what, you couldn't have put a better group of musicians together, man. Um, just you know, out of curiosity, I'm not sure how spread out all you guys are. What would be the odds of you guys just heading over to Mike's place and you know doing some live streaming of you guys jamming together? It would be easy for three or four of us. Okay. Uh, Bobby's in Jersey. Uh, Mike's in Pennsylvania. I'm in Long Island here in New York. Okay. Phil's in the Bay Area. Ah, so, uh, three thousand miles away. Uh, he's in the Bay Area, so it's you know not that easy right now, unfortunately. You know that as he it was bummer. last summer, where he hopped a flight a few days later. Can't do that anymore. You know, it's just things that used to be simple. It's unfortunately not so simple anymore. And no, no, no. no I mean, so- I've heard the flying experience. I mean, the flying experience in my opinion, it's been pretty miserable ever since, you know, 9-11. Now you put this on top of that, my God, I've heard that they want you at the airport like four hours ahead of time, you know, and they want to do all kinds of crazy scans and checks and this and that. It's just like, dude, you know what? The airport was already an unpleasant experience. Forget <laughs> this, dude. Like, you, oh my God, they got to come up with like a bullet train or something. Now, you know? especially JFK. That's where I would, you know what I mean? You could, I would not even want to go near JFK right now. Oh, yeah. oh man. Well, that's a Cause bummer, I, man. Because it would be cool to get you guys together, you know, because I know that some, some bands that are able to, you know, have been doing some, you know, streaming jam sessions and stuff, which is pretty cool. You know, and oh God, I mean, the public has got to be able to see you guys together. Like you said, everybody, BPMD, all right, that is the super group here, and they got their album, American Made, coming out June 12th via Napalm Records, and it is awesome. It would just be so great to see you guys together. Yeah, I, I one day we, I mean, this will pass. I don't know when. Yeah. Um, but one day when it does pass, we will we will get on that stage, you know. And not only BPMD, but all bands, you know. Life without live music, man. I just I I, I can't I can't comprehend it. And I you know I'm not into those whole drive up, pull up my car and watch a band. It's just it's it's cool. I get it. But what are you going to do, you know, how do you let loose? How do you have fun? You just sit in your car, you know, and no one thought about, it. man, what if I got to take a piss? What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, oh, only God. a drink. You can't do that. What do you do? Just pull up. You know, I, you know and I love the people are thinking like that. It's right. just the reality of the situation is we need live music. And, you know, I'm hoping the the uh, scientists of the world and the doctors and the smart people figure out something, you know, at least we could all hope. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least a different way to, you know, be able to interact, even if we don't have the vaccine. Cause I mean, you know, let's be honest, man, that thing's going to take time. And even then it's not foolproof. It's you not. Know? So it's, it's, even know, if the vaccine comes, who's going to try it? There's no, tr- yeah, it has to be a trial and error. You know, you're talking a few years, man, right. you know, and, um, yeah, we got to go on living, nice brother. Shot. We got to go on uh-huh. living. I understand everybody's, you know, they're, it's 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 kind of weird because there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of people in the middle. You know, it's like there are the people that are exercising extreme caution, like, come on, you know, just do what you're told. Lock yourselves in the house. If you don't have to go out, don't leave. And then there's everyone else being like, dude, bag this. I am out, man. You know, and I just wash my hands, use hand sanitizer, cover your mouth. But then we're hearing all this stuff. Well, if you're healthy and you're covering your mouth, then it actually could be a bad thing. It's just like all the the facts that we're getting are so, you know, all over the place, it seems. Yeah, I was texting um, back and forth with Alex Skolnick. Um, and on a side note, him and I are starting to get our heads into writing and doing, you know, doing things and whatnot. Metal Allegiance? More Metal Allegiance? Eh, we'll see what it is. Right. You know, and right. Probably, yeah, I would assume. Um, but it was funny, I because we were talking about Corona and COVID, 
And you don't know who to. And I was like, I don't know who to believe. I don't know what to. I don't know what's what. I don't know what's factual. I don't know what's politics to what's truth, to what. It, I have no idea. I know. No idea. I know. And um, it's just, you know, I'm living my little life in my little bubble here. I'm a, a third grade math teacher now, by day, uh, in quarantine man. land. Uh, and you know, the good part about this downtime, if you want to call it downtime, is um, it's giving us an opportunity to do a lot of creative uh, uh, elements with this record and to do things with this record that we probably wouldn't have done. And not because we didn't want to, just because of time. You know, you know the fact that you know Bobby and I are doing a shit ton of press, as is Phil, um, and we are doing everything and anything. Uh, we want to talk to people. We want people to know that, you know, you know, we're still right. We're still not only writing music but releasing music from a cover standpoint to creative. You know, so we're doing a lot of these things, and even me, on a creative side, working with the label. Um, with videos and video direction and just doing all these little things i've never done you know that i have time to do it now so it's nice to be able to do those things very cool very cool well i just have to say mark that you know i appreciate you and thank you you know as a musician because you you give the the ordinary folk like me you know something to really relax to you know something to really keep us entertained you know with with your beautiful music um, it's just awesome, you know. We all need that release, especially when we're cooped up. You know, it's like you know, it, it's really cool. It's just really, really cool doing what you guys do. Now, one thing that you kind of touched on at the very beginning of this conversation that I think would be really fun. You know, you mentioned that you and and Blitz are going back and forth. You know, texting and that you guys give each other a hard time and stuff like that. I think it would be really fun to see if you guys like. Again, I'm a video guy. You know, I do a lot of streaming and stuff like we are right now. I think it would be really cool if, like, you and Bobby did something where, you know, you're texting him, he's texting you, just, like, trash talk back and forth. But let you born ready and rated R. <laughs> and, and, but let the audience see it. I think that would be epic, man. That would be so cool, okay. you know, like, to have a camera on, you know, Bobby, have a camera on you, and then actually show what you guys are texting back and forth and, like, maybe do a little voiceover stuff, you know, just totally. That would be fun. I just like to plant seeds, seeds of ideas get, here and there. Probably get in trouble. Hey, man. Uh, hey, and man. all we do is offend each other. Hey. You know, so it's, um, <laughs> but it, it's daily. It's a daily, yeah. it's a daily ball busting ritual. And, but to put that aside and he knows I don't like to kiss his ass, but <laughs> he's a great dude. I love working with him. And, um, and the reason why we have this, whatever you want to call it, um, we wrote, we co-wrote a song for MA2 together, um, uh, and on that record, which is actually hanging behind me right here, right on, uh, "Mother of Sin." You know, we I do. I was like, "Here's the music, here are the lyrics, here are the verses, choruses, bridge." Um, let me know what you think. And he, he's like, "I love it. Um, can I tweak a few words just to fit my vocal stylings?" And of course, can I add some input into the lyrics? Of course, and then. So we took the song and we just we altered a few things. We kind of turned it into a co uh, co writing together, and we had a blast. It was awesome work with him on that, on that creative, and that's where our chemistry started. And then we started playing shows together with MA, and it was <laughs> again um, it was fun and um, and just sitting on a bus and you know sometimes we rent Airbnbs together. Uh, a bunch of the MA guys, the band guys together. So it's like heavy metal high school reunion, all in a house. Very so cool. it, you know, we developed this bond, and that's where it came in with Phil. Phil would stay, at, you know. So this chemistry was brewing while MA was is still going, and MA is on a break right now, of course. But it just brewed there, and we didn't know it. We didn't know it until that summer night last summer, and it was like, yes, 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 we're recording. It was just, you know. Awesome. And that's how and that's how MA was born, man. Um, same thing. Who, if you would have asked me if I was going to be a writing partner with Portnoy Ellison and Alex, and we'd have two records and an EP with a shit ton of legendary people, I would have laughed at you. Six <laughs> years ago, would have laughed. Um, but you know, and I'm humbled by it, and, and um, every day I'm humbled by it. And I don't take it for granted. I never have, never will. And um, so yeah, I just you know. I don't know what I've done, but I just keep 
Keep doing it. You lead a charmed life, Mark. You lead a charmed life, man. That's for I sure. That. I oh, appreciate Oh, man. Well, everybody, again, we are here with Mark Mengi, and uh, you know him from Metal Allegiance. Brand new band that he's got, you know, uh, album coming out, super group, BPMD, absolutely awesome. Bobby Blitz, Mike Partnoy, Phil Demmel, incredible. Comes out June 12th via Napalm Records, American made, American made. Awesome stuff. And uh, Mark, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us in Rock Titan Live, man. It's been awesome hanging out with you. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate your support, man. It means the world. Hey, man. Absolutely. Everybody, I'm Scotty J. Rock Titan Live. We're out.